I have a, a strong desire that I want to share this story with you this morning. A story I wrote years ago, and um, I haven't published it yet. I would like to publish this as a children's book. The story is called Frog on a Lily Pad. When I originally came up with this story, I was dating this girl, and I remember just telling the story. It's not like something that I had planned or thought about. It just flowed out of me. And I'm going to make it flow out of me the way that it flowed out of me back then, right? So I think this is going to speak to many of you today, even though my intentions are for this story is to be a children's book. I'm hoping adults will read this to their children because I think adults can get a lot out of this, right? So here it is. Once upon a time, there was a frog sitting on a lily pad in a pond. Suddenly, a storm came through that pond and swiped the lily pad out from the pond. And now the frog was on his lily pad and going down a river. The frog panicked because the frog had never been in a river before and the current was so strong. The frog struggled to fight this current. He struggled to make the lily pad go to the left he struggled to make the lily pad go to the right. He struggled to make the lily pad go in reverse. But no matter how hard this frog struggled, this lily pad wouldn't move because the current was too strong. So the frog collapsed with exhaustion. As the frog laid on the lily pad, trying to catch his breath, he started to wonder what was gonna be ahead of him. What's down this river? Is there going to be a, a, a snake in a tree somewhere? Is there going to be an eagle that comes down and snatches this little frog away? Perhaps there's an alligator waiting in the waters ahead of him. Or is there a waterfall at the end of this river? And as the frog started panicking and worrying about all these things, he looked to his right and he noticed a little frog sized lawn chair floating by in the river. So the frog reaches out, extends his hand, and grabs hold of that lawn chair and puts it on his lily pad. And then he sits down. And as he's sitting in his lawn chair, he looks over to his left. And there to his left is a little frog-sized umbrella floating by in the water and so the frog reaches out extends his hand and grabs hold of that umbrella and he takes the umbrella opens it up and sets it next to him on the lily pad now the frog's sitting in his chair and he's got an umbrella suddenly the frog looks to his right and he sees a little frog sized pair of sunglasses floating by in the river the frog reaches out grabs hold of these sunglasses and puts them on now he's looking pretty cool as he's kicking back in his lawn chair under his umbrella and he's got sunglasses on 
And lo and behold, what's that to his left? He notices a pitcher of lemonade with ice in it and even a straw in it floating by in the river. Frog reaches out, grabs hold of the lemonade, pulls it in, puts it on his lap. He's kicking back in his frog-sized lawn chair under his umbrella with his cool sunglasses on, sipping on lily pet, uh, on lemonade. And the frog sings this little tune. I'm just a frog on a lily pad going with the flow. Where the current takes me, I don't even know. If I knew my destination, I probably wouldn't go. But I'm just a frog on a lily pad. I'm just a frog on a lily pad. I'm just a frog on a lily pad going with the flow. And he rode off into the sunset. The end. Now that story is gonna be left open for interpretation, isn't it? People are gonna see that story in many different ways. But let me just tell you something. Because when that story suddenly was downloaded into me, I just told my girlfriend the story and then I decided to write this story down. And I gave it the title Frog on a Lily Pad and I even put the date on it. I have it somewhere in my paperwork, so uh, someday I'll share. And then I even went and I sketched the entire story on paper with a pencil. Whether I do the artwork in the book or maybe somebody that would love to do that kind of artwork for me, I haven't decided yet. I'm kind of wanting somebody to do the drawing for me and then if they do the art and I told the story you know we published the book whatever happens we'll see but it's been many years <laughs> and I feel like it's time to get this thing accomplished because I am a writer I published one book about my life story I want to publish this book frog on a lily pad and I have another book called Ant, The Ant and the Bumblebee, which I've kind of shared that story with you guys before, but I haven't made a conclusion to it yet, Andy. So, back to Frog on a Lily Pad. Like that frog, you're just sometimes at that place in life where you look around you like, man, I think I finally have peace. And as you're sitting there chilling like that frog was in the pond on his lily pad, suddenly a storm comes through. There's plenty of us that experience those storms almost daily. And this storm came and swept that lily pad right out of that pond and sent that frog on his lily pad down a river. And he had never been down a river before in a current like this ever. And sometimes you and I, we face storms that we just never, ever imagined would have happened to us. It's only the kinds of things you have, you heard that happened to other people. But now you're in it and it's happened to you. And now you're going down this, this, this river, this storm, this current in life. And no matter how hard you try to struggle to make the, your lily pad, your place of rest, your place of safety, your place of protection your place of peace, no matter how hard you struggle to make that thing move for you, the current's too strong. And you're fighting and fighting and fighting. Until you just, like that frog, you collapse from exhaustion. And like that frog, you start worrying what comes next. Is there gonna be a snake? Is there going to be something that snatches me away like an eagle? Is there going to be an alligator? Is something out there to kill me? 
Is there gonna be a waterfall where I just go plummeting to my death? Perhaps maybe not my death, but perhaps that waterfall sends me crashing down where now I'm wrecked for the rest of my life, disabled. All these things you worry about, right? The fear of what lies ahead. But the one thing, the one thing that happened to this frog is happening for us. But are we focused on our problems or do we notice there are provisions because the frog looks to his right and he sees a frog sized little lawn chair floating by. That's a provision. That's a place of rest, right? That frog takes his seat. He didn't have to work. He didn't have to perform works. He didn't have to make this chair come by by some kind of self efforts. If I only think chair, 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 come on chair. No, the chair came by. All the frog had to do was take it, right? God gave you a, a seat and it's in Christ on a throne. You are a king and a priest in Christ because you believed him for it. That's how you took it. But are you aware of it? Do you forget that you are seated in him? It's there. Has your mind grasped it, right? There's also, for this frog, to his left, a little umbrella that goes floating by. The umbrella gives him shade, gives him protection. Maybe a hailstorm's beating down on him and he's got this umbrella protecting him. Right? And then maybe those little sunglasses not only made him look cool, but maybe, just maybe, the sunlight comes through the trees or breaks through the clouds once in a while and hits him in the eyes right and in a, a storm is usually a dark a time of darkness you don't see the sun there's too much clouds too many no matter what though that frog was protected his eyes was protected right because sometimes you're in a dark place for too long and the light hits your eyes oh it can be overwhelming right so he had his frog sized little sunglasses we got to look cool at the same time, right? And then the provisions to nourish him. A little frog sized pitcher of lemonade floating by, even has a straw in it. Did he have to think, come on, lemonade happen, lemonade happen? Did that frog produce it or was it a provision and all he had to do was take? And then the frog sang his praise song, right? He's just a frog on a lily pad going with the flow. Where the current takes him, he doesn't really know. If he knew his destination, he probably wouldn't go, but he's a frog on a lily pad going with the flow. Do you understand? Sometimes those currents, they take you, there's a storm, you're not sure what the outcome is. You wouldn't have entered into that storm if you would have known it was coming. But it happened, it took you off guard. And now what choice do you have? You can struggle, you can fight, you can try. And you can worry. But you can also rest. Hebrews 4.11, labor to enter into that rest, struggle to enter into that rest. Do you want to fight the current or do you want to rest? Because sometimes your fight is resting and resting is a place of trust. It's that place of faith. 
And when you combine trust and faith, do you know what that makes you? A believer. That storm made a believer out of that frog, right? Maybe that frog was a believer before and almost was falling into that place of unbelief and, and not trusting and anxiety came in, whatever. The point is, the frog, the frog learned something through this trial. And that story doesn't tell you what the end is. It doesn't say if you went down a waterfall. It doesn't say that. Right? And I think God gave me that for a reason. Anyhow, I hope you appreciate this story. And you know what? There's a saying, when you snooze, you lose. But I like to say, when you snooze, you win. Do you understand? When you rest, you win. All right, you guys, God bless you all. Have a great day. I love you, and I'll see you in the next video.